TI fans, welcome to the first in a series of how-to videos for things Empyrean Galactic Survival. And the first is going to be how to make a very simple custom scenario for yourselves that just require you to fire up the solar system generator. And the shortcut of that can be found right here in your Imperium Galactic Survival install folder and you'll see the solar system generator EXE is right there. You can fire that up there or you can make a shortcut to it or whatever you want to do. Um, I use it enough to actually have made a shortcut to it. But So this is a great tool because of how the Alpha 8 deals with procedural generation is through a series of, of YAMLs in multiple YAMLs inside each of the planet type folders. And it, and it bases the generation off of those files and the criteria that we specify here in the generator. So the generator will give the variables and it'll spit out a, uh, a scenario for us. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So the first thing is you're going to want to fire that up. Then what we're going to be doing um, is make sure that it's defaulted to where it exports its stuff. You want to make sure that it defaults to whatever, wherever your install path is so Imperial Galactic Survival content playfields, it has to point to the playfields folder because this is where all the dynamic files reside. So let's say I'll just show you the barren. Well, uh, oh, okay, I'm not going to select that. Sorry. Uh, that, that's not a browse window. That's different. That's sort of a browse. That's a select window. Browse to select window. But I can show you right here under content stop that under content play field so this is the location here that is pointing to and we can look in there's the barren one there so you can see the three yamls that are in there right now um, they have criteria in them that you can modify and when you when you fire up the solar system generator it pukes it out into here so to speak if you're if you're making individual planets it needs to see this information and it will create a playfield dot yaml file right inside this folder or whatever folder that you're whatever planet type you're you're choosing is the planet type folder from the playfields that it's gonna stick it in. So let's say, let's do this. So here's the barren one, we have this up right now. We'll just, um, we can just minimize this for a second and we'll select barren. Okay, you can see based on our criteria of planet class four, um, it's sort of semi, always, always uh, regenerate it and especially if you're going to randomize. So I'm going to generate that. And you can see now it's fully populated all its proper size and all the uh, POIs based on those YAML files. And now, so if we spit this out, let's see if we export the YAML, you can see it's going to spit it out to the play fields folder into the barren playfield type. So let's export that and we'll bring that back up. So there it is there. Um, and we can fire that up and look at it. So notepad, you can, you can look at the stuff in notepad. You can edit it too if you wanted to a notepad, but I would suggest against it. There is a better tool and it is called Notepad++. And we are gonna get into that real quick here. So if you don't own Notepad++, go 
download it. You can. It's just an easy Google search, and you know what? I'll probably put it in the. Um, I'll put the link to the install path to their site. Uh, there's a free version. I believe there's a full pay for version too. There's donate. I'm not sure if there's a pay for version. There might be just donate, but um, it's it's pretty much the industry standard, believe it or not. So you should download it and use it to edit YAMLs with. I highly suggest you do that. It, it's much easier and I'm going to show you that right now. So if we want to open this with Notepad++, I can just right click on it and select Notepad++. Or I can go in and change my default file behavior to always use Notepad++ to open up YAMLs if I wanted to. Um, Okay, so you can see I had it remembered the last one that I had open. Now, a couple of huge benefits to Notepad++ is not only does it show you the pathway up at the top, with this, which is massive, you, you wouldn't believe how good of a thing that is, seeing your pathway up at the top. Believe me, it is a huge thing. Okay. Uh, also, flipping back and forth is quite easy. It doesn't like crap out trying to recalculate or anything. So it's smooth. It organizes everything properly for you. It recognizes what YAMLs are. And it recognizes the markup language. So that's fantastic. Why would you not use this tool? I don't know. It personally, if you're going to be modifying a YAML and you don't know what Notepad++ is, this might be the wrong tutorial for you. Just saying, so you should probably, you know, take your hands off the mic and, and just step away, step back. And, no, just kidding. Um, no, seriously, go download Notepad++ to edit these YAMLs with. It's just, it's almost mandatory, okay? Okay. So now that I've stressed the Notepad++ thing, uh, I'm going to just show you, you know, this thing, what it did is it made this Playfield YAML. Now this is static. This is based on the seed that I had chosen for it and that will be show up at the top. Now I chose seed 2018 and so this is a pre-generated it's always going to be this geography. If you use this Playfield YAML it will always no matter what seed you choose to run it with It'll always look the same, but by choosing a different seed, you'll get different POI and and um, resource placement. But we can get into that later. For now, I just wanted to show you Notepad++ and what a Playfield YAML was and how this tool generates a Playfield and exports it to that specific folder. That's the only place you can do that with. You cannot change this location. It will break unless you've made a new set of Playfield YAMLs with all the information in them. You have to point it to this one. Now, the, because this is a simple, dirty um, scenario that we're going to create, I'm assuming you have not built all these YAMLs, okay? So, because we're going to be scenario building, that's all we're going to look at with the with the uh, planet building one tool for, for this part of it. Let's go to the sector part portion. And you can see there's nothing in here yet because we haven't generated anything. Uh, let's, let's generate C, C218 or 2018. Um, now, for those of you that have 
seen or will see my multiplayer scenario and the scenario that I publish, you'll probably recognize these play fields, these, these sectors, I should say, and, and planets as part of that. Because yes, I used C2018 to generate some of my planets in my, in my custom scenario. So let's, once we've generated this, now, right now, I'm going to generate a different one. I'm going to go with a, a random number. I'm going to generate that. And I do not recognize any of those play fields, so that's fantastic. That means I hit a seed that I don't recognize any of the names for, and that's all I'm really going for at this point. Okay, so whatever seed that was, I'm going to name the scenario of that 93486. And what I'm also going to add to this is the build that I generate this with. This is actually RC3. So release candidate three, just before, like literally the day before it uh, um, launches live to, to stable branch. And this is the stable branch version. So um, these will be completely compatible with, with Alpha 8 stable. And, you know, it'll just be, it'll be the updates that, that uh, Elon does to the game that shouldn't affect the actual um, scenario. Okay. Now that we have this named, I'm going to actually export this scenario. Now when it exports, it's going to export it to, well, where do you guess? It's going to export it to your play fields. No, it's not. It actually exports it into your scenarios folder. So let's do this. We're going to export the scenario. Okay, and it took 891 milliseconds. Okay, so it didn't, there's no errors thrown. So I'm assuming that worked. Let's go look. So that was C, program files, x86, Steam, Steam apps, common. Appearance. So this is my pathway, not necessarily yours. So you want to go to the Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Imperium Galactic Survival Path. We go into the content and scenarios, and you can see it's there. The 93486 RC3 that we just created. And that's the date that I created it at. We can open up this, and you can see it has all it has the game options YAML in it. It adds all the templates. It has everything that you need to run this as a single as just a standalone scenario, kind of a static scenario because the world doesn't really change at this point. This is a statically generated for that C 93486. But what we can do is we can smash seeds together. Huh, how do you do that, you say? Well, it's simple enough. We want to generate multiple scenarios of different seeds and then one of them you're going to choose as your favorite whatever one you think and that's the one you're going to base your scenario off of and the other scenarios that you've created are just going to be play field feeders really is all they're going to be so so right now i just created this one here uh, it's sitting in my scenarios i also have the Epsilon Row scenario, and that is the published scenario that I currently want to update. So let's say, let's say, let's say you took you, this is, this is, let's say this is just a generic one. It doesn't, it 
doesn't necessarily have to be a customized one already. It's a generic one. You can open it up and you can take a look at the sectors file. This is the sectors file that's going to have to be modified. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, what we want to do um, is we also want to open up the folder that we're going to be bringing the content in from. So that right now is the sectors file for the the scenario that's going to get modified. So this is going to be the master scenario. You know, this isn't necessarily your name. This is whatever you've named it. So I've renamed this and then Steam has tagged a a sent to it for the um, the the Steam portion of it. Anyway, um, that's because I published it as a public scenario. If it wasn't published, it wouldn't have that number behind it. Anyway, okay. This is the sectors YAML that I'm going to modify. Here is my master sectors YAML. Now, as with anything, I would suggest that before modifying it, you create a copy of it and call it something else. So, or rename this one to just, whoops, rename this one to just sectors old, let's say. Turn the caps lock off and that's fine. Um, and then what we're going to do is we'll make a copy and we're going to paste the copy here and we're going to modify the copy. Now I'm going to rename that to just sectors. So now we have a copy of our sectors, our old sectors file, just in case that we screw something up because we're all human and typos can kill you when you're editing files like this, let me tell you. And you, sometimes you need your master to go back to. So keep your master around as a backup and just make a copy of it, rename it the sectors.yaml file. And this is the one that we're gonna open up. Now, I opened it up in Notepad++ and you can see there's no markup for it although it did line up everything fairly decently, so I'm okay with that. Now, it's easier to do in Notepad++, and that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to close out these ones here. I don't need these ones open. Okay, so um, you can see this is here. This location here, the sectors YAML, great. What we want to do now is we want to go into the sectors YAML of the the other, the secondary play field that we would have created. And for me, that would have been the one that I just made right now. So I want to go into here. I want to grab this. And what I want to do is I, I pretty much want to copy this verbatim, except for the Sun Star. We don't need the Sun Star. It's already got its own Sun Star entry. Now, if there is any duplicates, which there have been, because some of these names get duplicated, so you got to keep that in mind. If there is any duplicates, you can either rename it. And if you rename it, you have to rename... Um, well, it doesn't really matter. If you rename it, that's that's fine. But you also have to rename probably the play field folders too and rename the, the content in that one that you renamed to match what you renamed the, the play field folders to. So uh, I would suggest, you know, try and avoid that. You can either just delete it and not go with that that extra planet with the same name. And so that's what we're going to try right now is we're going to open this up in Notepad++. So now you can see 
that the pathway for this one that's highlighted is different. So as long as you keep tab of where you are on which one, you can't really screw up. Just always look up at the top. And that's a great way to track these because by using Notepad, they all say sectors. You can get lost and, and be like, oh, okay, which one is this sector's file? Is this the one I'm editing? And then you end up editing the wrong one. With Notepad++ showing the pathway up at the top, it's a lot harder to screw up that in that fashion. So here we go. Let's modify the, we want to modify the, this one. So for this one, we want to take this content. I don't want the sun star. I want this verbatim. Now I'm swiping and copying because you notice that it's highlighting only the text and portions of the text thereafter and portions of of the the line before the text are highlighted because that is how yamls work it keeps track of spaces very important very very important yaml so i'm just going to drag this down highlighting the whole thing and now that i've got it all highlighted I'm going to, for you Windows users, I'm going to hit Control C, and that copies all of the highlighted text exactly in the format that the, that the engine needs to load this play field, or to, to load the sectors, sorry. Um, now I've got that copied. I can go over to my original sectors from my original scenario and I can just add that in right down at the bottom by clicking at the end of the line of the last thing and hitting enter to get to the next line and then control V as in Victor to paste in the content that I copied from the other sectors file. So now you can see I've got the gray meat. I've got all up, oh, but now you can see some of my spacing is screwed up here. I have to correct that. So lucky enough, all that is is too much spaces. And I'm going to fix that right now to make it line up with the rest of them perfectly very important make them line up okay that looks fairly clean now and that's the original so these are the new play fields that i just are the new sectors that i just added to my sectors file so then cat down now i don't see any that i already had Martek, Martek, Asteroid Field, maybe. Ishruka Vega and Martek. Let's take a look. Uh, I do not see... Oh, no. Nope. No. Excellent. So none of the names of the sectors uh, matched up. Now, another problem could be is if some of the play fields had matching names. So hopefully not. Hopefully they match the names with, uh, with the sector. Um, now you don't have to worry about single, single space play fields like this asteroid field, because that's what its name is, Martek Asteroid Field. So that's not a big deal. 
uh, as long as it's marked here. And yes, it is. So, so just make sure that the play fields right here in this section here, where they show where they are in the in the sector, that's the location of them. Um, that the names aren't duplicated anywhere else. And since these are matching what the actual sector name is, I'm pretty confident that they're not gonna be duplicated. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. I think they're, this, the random generator names them all, like pretty much every single one of these is always gonna be the same name as the sector by the look of it. So I think we're golden. I think we're golden. So there we go. We've got our sectors file. I'm going to save that. I'm just going to hit save. So now our master sectors file has new sectors added to it. But in order to actually get that content, we need all those play fields still. So we got to go and actually copy those play fields folders over to the location in the other scenario. So that's what we're going to do now. So I'm going to highlight we don't need we don't need the mat that the actual folder itself. We need the folders inside. So I'm just going to I'm just going to select everything. So we want to grab it all but we want to remark out Sunstar. So if you have everything selected, you can hit control and left click on it to get rid of that out of the selection. Um, okay, so now that we have these, we can, let's copy these. So I'm gonna select copy by right clicking and it's gonna copy these selected items. So now it's in the buffer. So now I'm gonna go back over to my scenario and that's the epsilon row here. And I'm gonna paste them into my Playfields folder. And boom, easy enough. Really, they're not very big. Okay, so that just grew our scenario. Now the problem is we're not done with the sectors file. We could go ahead and run with this right now and it would work. But for me, I want to add some custom content and I want to make sure that those new sectors aren't too close to the starting planets to, uh, to give easy access to resources. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up denies in my starting planet sectors to all of the new play fields orbits that I just added. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my... scenario I'm going to open up these play fields because these have the names that I'm looking for I'm only looking for the orbits and the stations because those are the those are the um, the space play fields that you warp in and out of you don't warp in and out of planets or moons but but space stations and orbits yes and asteroid fields so what we got to do is we got to copy all these names into my sectors folder into this very specific file location here and our line location I should say so I want to go to my two play fields that are going to be starting locations and one of them is Zotet and this is my easy planet so you can see I've got a whole crap load of deny set up. I left all the allows generic and I left the denies on the other planets generic because I didn't care if they can connect up to other playfield seeds. 
it didn't matter to me I just didn't want my starting planets to be able to go there right away so what I what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add these names to the deny list by doing this I'm just gonna highlight the name here I want to spell it exactly how it is so I'm just going to actually copy its name oops I didn't want to go that direction I'm just gonna copy its name and then what we want to do is put this in the exact same format you have to use the same syntax so that means we need to put in a Did that yeah that's right yep that's the right one I'm like wait is that not okay so you can also see that it actually has a space also very important to hit space then now we're gonna paste in that name so control V in and there we go we just added a deny for that play field into my starting sector or one of my starting sectors now I got to find my other starting sector and do the same thing and that is bull and I'll add it into bull whoops okay so we're gonna put space and copy that in okay so what I'm going to do is I will go ahead and finish this off and I'll be right back. Okay, we have finished putting all the entries into the deny list for both my starters that I want to have those sectors denied warp access to. Now that doesn't mean that they can't warp. It from the, the, the starters but I, I have very specific sectors that I want to allow the starters to be able to warp out to uh, once they're there once they've warped once then pretty much it's a free-for-all for, for the most part there's it's a bit it's gonna be a little bit of a you know a, a rat's nest some denies in areas where you might get a little bit lost in there and stuff and I'm hoping people are and you know maybe run out of like Pataxid and and like you know be stranded in the middle of the universe somewhere that would be kind of cool okay uh, um, okay we we divest let's finish this off so we've got all our entries in on both my my uh, my play field is that I want denies on and making sure that I didn't typo anything making sure that I have one space and not multiple spaces yep and everything looks good there so this isn't the only thing we're gonna modify I actually don't want the new sector that was gonna be the start for the new play field um, that just got added I don't want that being a starter planet now I don't care that the planet itself is gonna have all the starter type stuff on it I just don't care that's fine it can be another it can be a another Akua clone for all I care but it was actually generated with a different seed so it's gonna have a different geography anyway um, so that's cool I, I just that's fine uh, I don't care if it has starter stuff on that planet that is absolutely cool what I don't want it to be a starter planet I don't want another generic vanilla starter planet I already have one and that's the medium start planet so what we want to do is we want to find which one has the start entry into it oh, 
Come on, really? There it is. Okay. So this is it here. Venkat. Venkat is the starting planet for that seed, that randomly generated seed, or that, that specific seed, I should say. Venkat is the starting planet for it. Well, I don't want it to be a starting planet, so I'm just going to remove this section right here and make sure there's no spaces or anything with the brackets there. So now that is not even going to be presented as a starting offer to players when they go to start. It just won't be presented at all. So they won't be able to start there. So it just doesn't matter. Um, so that's pretty much all we have to do with the sectors file at this point. And so I'm going to save this. Okay. And that was the ep my, my custom scenario. I, the sectors file is now completed on. And the play fields, I could, I could launch this right now and it would probably work because all the play fields have been copied. And it's ready to go. But I actually want to modify one of the starting planets. Uh, it was it was suggested maybe that I put some civilian outposts on the easy one, and I thought why not? Why not give it a little bit of a of a alpha six alpha seven flavor to it, right? So I can do that. We still got our vanilla alpha eight start. That's the medium start. We have a hard desert planet without atmosphere start. And now we'll have a really Care Bear easy <laughs> with a whole bunch of civilian. Yeah, that's okay. It's going to be fun. And I think this is cool. So let's do this. So we are going to go into the starting playfield YAML of, I'll show you in the sector file. Zotet is one of my starting play fields and that is the one I chose to be the easy one because I've added some stuff to it already so we're gonna add more stuff okay so we're done with this sectors file I'm actually gonna close this so that I don't have too many things open there and I can just minimize that okay so we're pretty much done with this this scenario that I generated now. I, all I wanted to do was copy the sector information and the play fields out of it. I didn't take any of the other stuff out of it. You can see that I didn't use any of the prefab uh, templates or the game options YAML from it. Um, I don't need that stuff. I already have that in the master scenario that I'm that I'm modifying. Okay, so don't copy those over. Only copy the the, the individual playfield folders over. Whatever you do, do not copy the rest of this over and overwrite your original uh, scenario because you'll you'll wreck your original scenario. It'll it'll you'll change it. So don't do it. Um, next, we're going to modify the playfield. Now, I actually want to add the, the civilian um, POIs, and I know on the hard planet they were there. So what I'm going to do, that was a desert planet. I'm going to go into the content. I'm going to go into play fields. So these are the generic play fields for the game. I'm going to go into the... Um, desert play field and you'll be able to see down in the static YAML um, what I'm going to scoop out of here so I want to take this civilian settlement right here I want to tape this chunk right here 
but we're going to modify this information here. So you can see this is remarked up out up here and it says uh, trading station with some settlements. Okay, so the trading station spawns and then spawns these settlements because they spawn near the TS planet. Well, I'm going to change that information there when we copy it over to the other play field. But in the meantime, we're going to copy this. And I'm going to reopen this in Notepad++ so that I have my, my, um, my pathway set up at the top here for me to remember what, what I'm doing because I can be a complete bonehead sometimes. Okay, so let's grab this entry right here. Again, I'm going to copy all of the spacing and you can see it grayed out. It didn't gray out anything past the, the text because there is nothing past the text, but it grabbed a whole bunch of spaces. So I'm going to hit Control C to copy it like that. And then what I want to do is I want to go into my custom scenario. So I'm going to go into content. I'm going to go into scenarios. I'm going to go into my custom scenario. I'm going to go into the play fields there and I'm going to go into my Zotet. And I'm going to go into see it's actually got a play field YAML because it's a statically generated play field using the, the solar system generator. Okay, and that was stupid. I'm not going to open it with that. I'm going to edit with Notepad++. And you can see it just opened it in another tab. So we've got this play field when it's active, that's the pathway. This play field when it's active, that's the pathway. Now this is play field static, so that's not a big deal. This is play field YAML. Now in play field static, it showed it right underneath where the thing was that it's spawning beside. So we can do that too. Let's do, let's go down to the custom start that I've got here. We've got a, a little custom base. That's really, it's not even a base. You can't even use it as a base. All it is is pretty much just a indestructible personal cargo container really, because you can't, uh, well, there's, there is a shower and a toilet. Okay, so there's a shower and a toilet. So you can, you know, do your bodily functions. And uh, come on, we're, it, it's way down here, way down past all this crap. Come on, way past here. Now, here we go. Once it gets to the description part, well, actually, I had to put in this description myself. And that description, if you add the description line, so this does not exist in the YAML. I had to go and add this manually. I had to add description, exactly how I typed it out there. And then I put in some color content um, with the difficulty set to easy. That, so that's the, it's saying, you know, the difficulty of this is easy. And then some text markup that uh, that attacks you when you look at it. No, I'm just it's just it's just information when you see it when you go just before you select the planet to start. Um, what I did is I yoinked this out of an uh, an existing um, play field that already had this content, and those it exists already for for other scenarios in the game. So you can go into some of the other scenarios and look at the uh, starting planets and you'll find this here and you can just change this. You can change the, the color coding and stuff. And there's a chart to look that up. I'm not gonna get into that right now. So I'm not even gonna go there. So if you wanna do that up, you go for it. Um, anyway, I just copied this verbatim. I don't care about the text color, that was fine. Uh, that was actually a yellow text color for like medium difficulty or something, I think. But anyway, I didn't care. Doesn't matter. Um, so once we get down here past all this section, right where it gets to the resources, it'll start getting to the POIs. This is the starting point, neutral POI 
the null POI they call it it's not really a it's just it's just where um, it's just where basically the, the, the drop pod drops and you can you can unremark some of the stuff if you want to, to make it spawn resources uh, within so if you unremark this it would spawn the resource iron resource one or two of them uh, promethium 101 or and copper 101 um, within 1,000 to 2,000 meters but we're not going to do that uh, we're going to leave that remarked out. <clears throat> okay, so you can see that I have modified. There used to be one called the uh, Junk T2, which is the wreckage with the personal container and all that. Well, our little GTI habitat also has a personal container in it. Now, we put a admin core in it because we didn't want it to be able to be destroyed or used in... Uh, as a base in any way other than just to store stuff in the personal container and remove stuff out of the personal container is really all it, all it is and it's an indestructible personal container okay but what it does it, it also avoids certain things to spawn here and avoids the alien tower small story uh, that is the Robson protocol tower um, but it also spawns resources around it now i cranked these up quite a bit so they were like one to two iron and like one silicone one copper well i cranked those up uh, i left the spawn resource range of the of them the same though now when we paste in this information here so you can see i clicked at the end of that line i want to hit enter and you'll notice that there's a space between the last one and this one. So I'm actually going to hit enter again. And then I'm going to copy paste or I'm going to hit control V. And now you can see that I'm not actually lined up properly for the initial one, but it looks like the rest of them lined up. So good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix this. And where does that line up? That lines up with that, like that. Yep. See, the great thing about Notepad++, it gives you markers to line your, your stuff up with. Very, very handy. So, right now, this is going to spawn near TS Planet. Well, there is no TS Planet, so I'm going to have to change that. I'm going to do the GitHub, GTI Hab. So, let's change this to... GTI hab and but that's a little bit close I'm going to choose 500 to a thousand meters even that's really close so to spawn two to four settlements right near the the GTI habitat that's 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 kind of crazy. This is kind of giving people like free gear right off the bat. Like just wow. Kind of this is like going to be like Care Bear start. But I'm not done. Let's make it even more Care Bear. Let's add settlements to around the planet now. Those, these are just going to spawn immediately around the GTI habitat. I'm going to do another entry. And we'll see it in this static one here. This is not the only settlement. What we're going to do is we're going to grab the other one. Here it is here. Civilian settlement. Random civil outposts scattered around the planet. Now you can see the, the min-max is only one, two. But oh wait, is scaling count equals true? Okay. So that means on the lowest level side, on the lowest smallest planet size is going to be one to two and that scales up so we should probably just leave it like that and let it scale so let's copy this and you can see it has all the regen key values and stuff which we need 
because this is going to be multiplayer mostly. Okay, so let's enter twice. And because I don't really think it matters where, see, this is all remarked out. It doesn't really matter where we put this entry in because these are remarked outlines. It doesn't even look at this. It looks at all these to be in the same spot. It doesn't matter about the remarks. So I'm just going to put this here. And make that line up again. I believe it was like right there. Yeah. Okay, and that looks like it's all lining up. It's all lining up. It's all lining up. Okay. Good. Okay, so that's going to add some civilian settlements to the rest of the planet now. So this is the civil civil settlement group. Now, there's a whole bunch of POIs in that group and I'm not going to get into it. We're we're talking everything from like from like a um, a mining hub to a shuttle hub to a civil hub to a you name it. Every one of those neutral POIs that you could raid are in this group. So we'll just let that randomly select and generate based on the seed that we run the scenario on. <clears throat> because the seed will dictate what POIs and where they go. The YAML already knows how to generate the dirt, so to speak, the planet itself, because it was already created with this seed. See what I'm saying? We, the, the planet is always going to have the same geography. But the mineral deposits and POIs will change depending on the seed that you run the scenario at. So, so keep that in mind. For single player, it's not as efficient because the, the, it's always the same map even though that the POIs and and, uh, um, and deposits change. So much like Alpha 7. So remember how Alpha 7 did it? They were, it was a static map with POIs that changed. Well, that's what this is. That's what this is. It's very Alpha 7-ish, but we're incorporating the bigger size planets with the newer stuff in the planets with the biomes. So very important. Very important to generate with the solar system generator because then you get all the good stuff. Okay, uh, also we could have modified a lot of this stuff too and we can modify it from the, the play field YAML if we want. Now we're, we're not going to bother with um, modifying any of that. I don't need to. It's just fine. Um, so what we want is just to make sure that our entries are lining up in the right spot again before I hit save. You can see how far down it's way down line. Oh, that's the other thing too. With Notepad++, you know which line you're at very important for troubleshooting because most log files will spit out what line and what column it had issue with in a play field in a uh, play field YAML okay um, I'm thinking I'm thinking we're ready to go with this so, so let's let hit save Okay, at this point, we've done our special modifications to the play field even. Now, you can see that I've done a, a very unique start with this one. We're actually starting at the GTI Hab. And the reason I did that is I wanted a real, real easy start where people just get gear right away. 
and get their stuff. So this isn't all the gear they get. This is just the personal constructor or the personal container gear. Uh, and if, if we want this to be a viable place to spawn, not only does it have to have a player spawner block in it, in the um, in the the prefab, but it also has to say player start equals true. This syntax has to be in right above the spawn near POI. So once you've done that, to make it a POI start. Go down to the player start section of the play field. And so fixed player start section right here. You can see in creative mode, blah. Another one in creative mode, blah. Debug mode, blah. Survival mode. Okay, that's for us. It looks at spawn structure. So this used to be spawn escape pod. I changed that to structure. And I remarked it, structure used to be remarked out. I unremarked it and changed it to GTI dash hab. Now, the reason why I called it, I said GTI dash hab is because that's its actual name of the structure when it spawns in. And you'll know what I'm talking about if you build a prefab. You'll know it belong, you'll, you can assign it to a group which is the group that I name there. And the reason why it's always going to spawn this, I only have one thing in that group name. I only have one prefab in that group name. And it's this GTI hab, dash hab. So when it spawns in, I want people to be able to spawn there. Uh, also, um, they don't spawn with any armor. So I've got that remarked out. And then they also on them, this is the items on them, depending on their difficulty. So if they chose easy, this is the easy start, I believe, here. This is the medium start. And you can see it's all the same. I kind of trolled people because it's such an easy start. This is all you deserve anyway. Okay. So there's my rant. And... You're going to get an extremely easy start with this play field set up like this. Yeah. Okay, let's hit save. And you can see it's grayed out. That means I've already saved. There's no nothing new that I've done to it. So that's awesome. We can just go ahead and close this now. We can close this. We can close this. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually test this now. So that was my Epsilon row scenario. Let's do a new game. <clears throat> and we're going to choose the Epsilon row. Okay, so before I update scenario, I'm going to test it. Uh, let's go to Zotet. That's the play field that we modified. So I don't care about the seed. I don't care about any of this crap. I'm just, I just want to log in and test it. So let's see if it crashes. Now, I have a feeling it's not going to crash because when I chose that scenario, I didn't get a, a error. If you get an error when you choose the scenario, chances are it ain't going to work. It's just something screwed up. And you can go into... Um, Oh crap, I forget what log it is. You, know, you, you can go look on the, the forums and it'll discuss all the logs, the troubleshooting logs, all that stuff. You can find it. It's kind of it's kind of all over the place, but you can find the information or you can ask about it. Log, sign up to the forums if you haven't already and ask, ask these questions. People will be able to direct you in the right direction. Most people are pretty good on those forums. They're not trolls. They're, they are generally trying to help people. It's an alpha testers form really at this point for the most part <clears throat> and alpha testers aren't trying to troll people trust me okay takes a while to load there's a lot of planets 
I don't know how big this scenario is. <laughs> how many play fields did I just, planets did I just add? I just added a few, didn't I? So that's the other thing we're testing too, is if all these, these actually don't crash on me when, um, when the sectors file loads and it looks like it's loading quite fine. And there we go. We start <clears throat> in my custom POI that uh, my cohort in arm stick has made. Well, he, he just modified one of the existing prefabs and put in a player sp spawner took out some, some gear that was unnecessary. And basically there is nothing here. You, this is an admin core. Uh, you can't do nothing with it. All you can do is access, well, there is an armor locker, that's huge. Early game, that's huge, because you can make armor fairly low level. You just can't put it on until you're like fifth level if you don't have access to an armor locker. So there's our gear loadout from the personal container. That's working fine, as specified. So that was, in total, this is the gear loadout between, between starting with it on the person and grabbing it from the, from the personal cargo box. You get a drill, biofuel, portable constructor, motorbike, some spuds, some food, some, some medicine, a tent, and a flashlight. So this is tons of stuff to start with. Way more than you need uh, because you can actually do a lot of stuff in the game and that's not what I'm here to do. I'm not showing you the game. What I wanna do is I just wanna make sure that the rest of the stuff spawned in properly. So we're gonna tilt in and we're gonna reveal the map by hitting map. And then we're going to go into our map and we're going to scroll out. So we've got, oh yeah, see, we've got transport hub right there. We've got shuttle hub. We've got civil hub. Yep. So we got three civilian POIs that did not exist on this play field before that spawned within a thousand meters of the GTI hub between 500 and a thousand meters. So just so perfect, perfect distance. You still got to run a little bit to it. It's, I don't even think it's in, is it in the starting biome? I don't think so. Cause there's a starting biome there. So nice. Now let's see if we actually got some other civilian POIs. We just got to take a look. So research site right there. That's another one of the civilian POI. So there we go. Crash Sentinel, that's not one, but that was, so that transport hub, there's another one. So it's added a couple. Shrine, that's not one. Listening post is not one. Armory is not one. Advanced spaceport's not one. Advanced supply station, no, 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 no. Titan, Titan. Okay, so it only maybe added a couple, but that's okay. Residence, there we go, there's another one. Settlement, there's another one. Looks like there's a whole bunch of stuff over here. Oh, this is the, uh, yeah, this is all the stuff for the Robson protocol, which you can do in this scenario using the faction missions. The Robson Protocol is now available as faction missions and pretty cool. So you can multiplay the faction Robson Protocol. Um, abandoned factories on this one. That is the abandoned. So that's the abandoned wreckage or the abandoned group one that we got was the abandoned factory. That's okay. The abandoned factory is the best one. That's a crazy one with lots of stuff. So we've got some good, good stuff now on the planet that's gonna, that spawned. It's, look at how huge it is and how many POIs there are. Um, 
and there there's enough resources especially around the starting area and i mean i don't know maybe you know maybe there isn't enough resources i don't think there is it doesn't seem like there is does it they're only spawning around certain things so let's let's crank that up a bit let's crank that um, that number up shall we okay so we're going to modify this again let's get out of here let's quit that and we'll just tab out of our game here for a second. And we're going to get back into the... Play field. So we'll go back into my Steam folder, Steam apps, common, Pyrrhon Galactic's file of content, scenarios, uh, Epsilon row, and then, or whatever you called yours, right? That's up to you. Um, and then we're going to go to play fields, and I want to go to my Zotac one. And we're going to edit that play field. Oops. Did I not edit? Edit with Notepad++, plus plus, sorry. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to go up to where the resource spawn location is which is down 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 I went way past it there okay so it's right a little bit more right here here we go okay <clears throat> so you can see the max that the min max you think is a lot but on a huge planet like that it doesn't really seem to be does it so let's let's go insane and double this. We're literally going to double this. Now, keep in mind these scenarios are are generated with single player in mind. So you pretty much want to maybe double or triple the amount of resources. So I'm going to double. I think double will be fine right now. Oops doesn't seem to want to just highlight that one I'm just going to type in 20 here and we'll do 30 ah I got a back swipe that's it um, so let's do 20 30 again 20 oops that time it highlighted everything. Why is it doing it this time? I don't know. Is it going to change everything? Nope. Good. Sometimes I'm not sure with these with these tools. You know, no, I'm not I'm not a huge um, developer or anything like that. I can script, but this stuff is more development than scripting. Believe it or not, it looks like scripting, but it's actually it, it's a little bit more developmental sort of stuff that's more of a markup language than it is scripting. Uh, okay, so let's just modify these. So we'll do 20 and 30. And the, oh, but we got two Promethium ones. So let's do, let's just double these to 10 and 20. So 10. 20 and this will be 20 30 20 and 30 okay there's probably not going to be much of a Prometheum issue on this planet so let's save that okay so oh you know what we don't have anything else falling as resource asteroids on this planet well my bad we need to rectify that well let's do that so let's copy this one the iron resource and we're going to add that in 
and we're going to do a double space for that and then we're going to bring that back over and line that up with the other one yep so what I want to do is I want I want copper so we've got to spell it exactly how it is I want copper to fall and we'll just leave the threshold the way it is I guess um, so let's just well I still have that in the buffer don't I so I'm just gonna hit enter twice put that in again pull that across and change iron to silicon Now, you notice that I didn't sweep and grab the space because I don't want to wreck how this markup is. Because if, if I got rid of that space, I don't think this would work. So, just place trace that with the silicon. Okay. And then we're going to paste another line. And this is going to be Promethium. So I'm just actually going to copy that just so I don't typo it. And just grab that portion and paste that in. Okay, so now we should have meteorites that fall when these resources on the planet get down to a, to 20 percent uh, they'll start so that's going to take a while considering how many that we should get spawning so let's save this okay so now Let's fire up the scenario again. So we're gonna do a new game. We're gonna do Epsilon Row again, and we're gonna choose Zotet, and we'll do test two. Whatever, I, we can even randomize the seed. Doesn't really matter at this point. I just wanna see if we get a whole bunch of resources. Now the amount that spawns around the the POI is not going to change. And anything that spawns around POIs that are set in the description of the POI to to spawn is not going to change because that's not what I changed. I changed the overall just the ones the generic ones that spawn out in the planet. Those are the ones that I changed. The amount of those. <clears throat> So I pretty much doubled how many there were. We'll see. We'll see if it actually loads them up correctly. And it didn't error out with the scenario, so that's a good thing. And I haven't got a error at all. Realistically, this this release candidate, which is which is the stable branch the stable candidate, uh, which they're pushing tomorrow. So, no error so far. And it's got to load the structures, that's fine. It took a little bit longer to, to load um, than last time. I'm guessing the, the, all the deposits are going to make that so let's just we don't even need to go look outside at this point let's just go into our um, tilde screen into the console and uh, just type in map hit enter escape out oh actually you know what I think you can X out of that now let's can, does that actually work now oh it does wow yeah they fixed that uh, so again more bugs is bugs fixed and 
let's take a look now at our map. So we're going to zoom out and we now have, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Way more, way more, literally double what there was. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Look at that. Like, yeah, that's excellent. This is excellent now. Okay. So now it's not just big, vast openness of nothing for like forever. Now there's the occasional ore deposit. All right. Okay. More than the occasional in some of the biomes. Like, wow, that one has lots of uh, Prometheum in it. So that'll be one of those radiated biomes. Nice. So there we have it. It functions. We didn't screw it up. We now have an updated scenario with a whole bunch more play fields. We've modified our existing play field that we had to have more ore and civilian settlements. Uh, very cool. This is going to be exciting. This goes live tomorrow on our server. So, which is the 12th is tomorrow. So this is probably going to be this first video will be published tomorrow. So it goes live today, later today. <laughs> you'll see, you'll see us streaming this later today. So there you go. A little sneak peek of what's coming up guys. Um, that's how you do it. That's how you make a scenario in the game right now. If you want, if you don't mind a statically generated play field to have the same map every time. If you don't like that, then there's other ways of doing it, but that is not what this video is all about. So thanks for joining me. This was Playfield Alpha 8 Playfield Generation and Modification and Scenario Build 101 by yours truly, Zlot from Geek Tech Industries. Enjoy. I will update this scenario right now. And publish it. So we can do that actually right now. I can just... Oops. Update. To public. So it's both. We will update that. Okay, well, there we go. It's available on Steam for you guys. Um, you can you can find it on the link to my workshop items in the description of this video. And I hope you have fun with it. So all you got to do is is subscribe to the link and it'll be available for you when you go to play a game. If you want uh, to um, put it on your server, you can just go into your scenario folder and I believe it up. I, hmm. Now I got to look at that again. That is, yeah, you can just grab it. It should upload it to the uh, scenario folder. Okay. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you um, um, subscribe to the scenario and try it out. Uh, there's a hard start. There's a medium start. And there's an ultra easy start. But the settings for the game content so that the the critters and how many uh all your settings are all defined by you so your difficulty setting your overall difficulty is set by you these are just the play field difficulty on the the, the scenario based so well guys thanks a lot for joining me and i hope you 
catch us on the live stream on June the 12th at around 8.30 p.m. Pacific time. And we'll be launching our server live with this scenario. Until then, guys, you have an awesome, awesome day.